The First Lady series is sponsored by Freedom. Funding for this series is provided by Patreon supporters. If you would like to make a donation, please click the Patreon link in the description below. Martha Dandridge was born on June 2nd, 1731 on her parents' plantation, Chestnut Grove, in the British colony, province of Virginia. She was the oldest daughter of John Dandridge, a Virginia planter and immigrant from England. Martha had three brothers and four sisters. On May 15, 1750, at age 18, Martha married Daniel Park Custis, a rich planter two decades her senior, and moved to his residence, White House Plantation. Located on the south shore of the Pamunkey River, a few miles upriver from Chestnut Grove, they had four children together, Daniel, Francis, John, and Martha. Daniel and Francis died in childhood. The other two children, John Park Custis and Martha Park Custis, survived to young adulthood. The full Custis estate contained plantations and farms totaling about 27 square miles and 285 enslaved men, women, and children attached to those holdings. Daniel Park Custis's death in 1757 without a will meant that, according to the law, his and Martha's eldest male child, John Park Custis, would inherit, when he became an adult, two-thirds of the Custis estate, its slaves and the children of those slaves. Martha received a dower share, the lifetime use of, and income from the remaining one-third of the estate and its slaves. As a man who lived and owned property in the area, Colonel George Washington of the British Colonial Forces likely knew both Martha and Daniel Park Custis for some time before Daniel's death. During March 1758, he visited her twice at the White House plantation. The second time he came away with either an engagement of marriage or at least her promise to think about his proposal. At the time, she was also being courted by the planter Charles Carter. In December 1758, George Washington resigned his military commission. George Washington became her second husband on January 6, 1759, at the White House Plantation. Martha was 27 years old. The couple honeymooned at the White House Plantation for several weeks before setting up house at Washington's Mount Vernon estate in Fairfax County, province of Virginia, British America. Martha and George Washington had no children together, but they raised Martha's two surviving children. The American colonials proclaimed no taxation without representation, starting with the Stamped Act Congress in 1765. They rejected the authority of the British Parliament to tax them because they had no representation in that governing body. Protests steadily escalated to the Boston Massacre of 1770 and the burning of the Gatsby in Rhode Island in 1772, followed by the Boston Tea Party in December 1733. The British responded by closing Boston Harbor and enacting a series of punitive laws which effectively rescinded Massachusetts Bay colonial rights of self-government. The other colonies rallied behind Massachusetts and a group of American patriot leaders set up their own government in late 1774 at the Continental Congress to coordinate their resistance of Britain. The conflict then developed into war during which the patriots fought the British and loyalists. The Continental Congress declared the colonies free and independent states on July 2nd, 1776. By tradition, Martha Washington was described as spending her days at the Revolutionary War winter encampments visiting with the common soldiers in their huts. However, there is no evidence that Martha Washington visited with the common soldiers. Noting that Martha Washington was fashionably dressed, Mrs. Washington joined her husband during the Revolution and for all the Continental Army's winter encampments. General Lafayette observed that she loved her husband madly. Lady Washington took part in the camp's May 6 celebration of the formal announcement of the French-American alliance. In October 1781, the British surrendered their second invading army of the war under a siege by the combined French and Continental armies commanded by George Washington. The war had effectively left mainland America with some smaller battles taking place elsewhere between the French and English. Then on September 3rd, 1783, the Treaty of Paris was signed, ending the war that had become known as the American Revolutionary War. After the war, Martha wasn't fully supportive of George's agreeing to be president of the newly formed United States of America. Once he assumed office, she hosted many affairs of state at New York, New York, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania during their years as temporary national capitals. The socializing became known as the Republican Court. In his July 1790 will, George Washington left directions for the emancipation, after Martha Washington's death, of all the slaves that he owned. His will stipulated that his slaves were not to be freed until Martha's death because of the desire to preserve the families 
Martha Washington signed a deed of manumission for her deceased husband's slaves, a transaction that was entered into the records of Fairfax County, Virginia, and eventually lost during the American Civil War. Martha's health declined after her husband's death. Two and a half years later, Martha Washington died on May 22, 1802, at the age of 70. Upon her death, her dower slaves reverted to the Custis estate and were divided among her foreign grandchildren. Following her death, Martha was in George Washington's tomb at Mount Vernon. In 1831, the surviving, the surviving executors of Washington's estate removed the bodies of George and Martha Washington from the old vault to a similar structure within the present enclosure of Mount Vernon. The USS Martha Washington, ID 3019, was a transport for the United States Navy during World War I. The ship was scrapped in 1934. The first U.S. postage stamp honoring an American woman honored Martha Washington and was issued as part of a 1902 stamp series. The second stamp issued in her honor was released in 1923. The third stamp to honor Martha Washington was issued in 1938 as part of the Presidential Issue series. Martha Washington is the only non-fictional woman depicted on the face of a United States banknote. Her engraved portrait bust was used on the face of the $1 silver certificate of 1886 and 1891. Both Martha and George Washington are depicted together on the reverse of the $1 silver certificate in 1896. The first spouse program under the Presidential $1 Coin Act authorizes the United States Mint to issue half-ounce $10 gold coins and bronze metal duplicates to honor the first spouses of the United States. The Martha Washington coin was released on June 19, 2007 and was sold out in hours. In the 1976 pornographic film Spirit of 70 Sex, Annette Haven played Martha Washington. This is the only time Martha Washington has been portrayed in a pornographic film. And with that mind-blowing revelation, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching and fare thee well.